Hey, what's up everybody? I am now on the way to the gym. Got to put the lift back into Cyberlift. And it's also our first day on hurry mode for 1264. We're getting ready to go through this light that's been a bit of a sticking point. Um, I've got some content that I'm putting into a failure that shows kind of the difficulties of 1263. And this is one of them. I haven't really had this problem on 6.4 yet. I don't know if it's fixed. But there's an issue up here where uh, if we get the red light and it sees that the right lane's open, it'll want to get over. This becomes a turn only lane, that's a problem. So it needs to stay in this lane to go straight. But we'll see what happens. We do have a red light. Hopefully it sees that it's a turning lane and doesn't try to get over because we can, I can actually see the turn arrow now. Oh, he got out of the way, so this is a bad example. So we're good, we're staying in this lane like we need to. Um, I've had 1264 for a couple days. I've shifted the data recaps to just waiting until I've finished the two day cycle with the mode before I put it up. Um, and cause like a two day cycle on an FSD mode for my testing might not be a consecutive two days because something comes up or I have to do something else. So I might miss a day of work and thus a day of testing on the system in that way. So, uh, two days of chill mode that go into a, da a data recap is because those were the two dedicated days of time put into the system because I've tried to spread that out evenly. So I hope that makes sense. It might explain the little bit of like a time discrepancy when some of the data recaps come out, but I'm just trying to simplify it, make it easier to understand. Now we shouldn't have any issue with the school zone because it's a Saturday, so we should be good here. Um, so far, 1264 has felt very similar to 1263, which honestly felt very similar to 1262. The 126 branch as a whole, uh, well, okay, minus, you know, 1261 that I never got that people said was hit or miss. Some liked it, some said it was really annoying. I started with 12.62, and since then, has been just really a great improvement over 12.5 and uh, 12.36. So, I will say that the first day with this was a little sticky. Uh, we had an issue that I've noticed is remaining on the 12.6 branch, where you can be sitting at a red light, <clears throat> and almost like how we humans will do when we can see that, hey, that light's turning yellow, so this is about to turn green, and you start to lead the red, and then it turns green and you go. It seems like FSD is trying to do that, but it is not doing it correctly, and it is trying to lead and proceed while it's still red, and it's gonna stay red for maybe another you know, 10 to 15 seconds. That's still very bad. So I've had to take over once on 12.64 with that. I've had to stop the car once on 12.63 with that, and hopefully I'll be able to actually catch that on camera, because those things kind of happen sporadically, and, and so far the two times it's happened has been off camera. Go figure. And I don't know that it's a specific red light, the, the other one that it happened at on 1263 is leaving a supercharger over on the uh, east coast. I, I think just south of Cocoa Beach, like heading to Melbourne. So I could go and actually like test that light and see if that light causes that issue to see if it's a, a specific light problem or if it's just kind of random. And now that I'm on hurry mode, I'm expecting over the two dedicated days of testing on hurry mode to go through the back roads kind of like this, you know, going between Haines City and Winter Haven, uh, Sebring, Lake Wales, all the places where you've got a lot of back country road travel, uh, single and two lane. Um, a lot of the times it's just like this, one way either way with a speed limit of about 65 miles an hour, about 105k, and Floridians are doing 80. <laughs> And hurry mode and even standard mode have attempted, as you might have seen in my videos or other videos, to actually execute passing zone maneuvers. And if it does it competently, you know, it's fine. There's not really an issue. The problem is that aside from two examples that are actually in one of my videos covering the failures of 12.62, showing how it was good, uh, it got lucky in those instances because there was just no other cars for a good while. In the other four or five times that I've had to take over, it's either tried to start the passing maneuver when there's a car, like, there. I mean, you know, like, that's that's bad. You, you would not, I mean, unless you are blitzing around at full speed and pinching the gap, you wouldn't have made it. And that's just completely unsafe. That is a wild load. And I don't know, I did not see any, like, oversized load signs on that. Okay, there they are on the back, and he's got a follow vehicle. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, um... The other example, or the other reason I've had to take over in those cases is because it'll get over to go around the car and then just inch ever so slowly. And it's, it feels like it does a faster job of getting into the passing lane on the highway to go around people than it does in a passing zone. 
And you do need to weigh, like, how fast are you going to not be excessive and maybe get pulled over. Passing zones are, are kind of wild, you know, if you stop to think about it. I grew up with them, so they've always been something I've dealt with. Um, but I don't know. Like, if you've got a cop behind you and you do a passing zone, let's just say you're a lot more unsure of yourself. But in both cases where it could have done it right, it was just going so slow. Just inching, inching, inching to where I had to get throttle and get over because the other cars were getting close to us. So it's a, I, I don't even think it should be a skill that the car has, honestly. I don't think it's necessary for an autonomous car. Just, you know, stay there unless somebody is going incredibly slow with like their hazard lights on. Like if it's a 50 or 60 mile an hour road and this person's doing 20, like, yeah, when it's clear, gap around them that's totally fine uh that, that should definitely be a rare thing but if they're going the speed limit or even just a little bit under it you know it can be annoying but if you're not the one driving and you're just chilling you're doing some work or whatever you're not really going to be all that impatient or be thinking about it much so I, honestly the best part or process is no part or process and i know that version 12 and 13 now are not like hand coded you know it's, it's video trained but if there's a way to isolate a maneuver or to sort of blacklist a maneuver, I would. I, I would blacklist passing zones because it really just, it's an unnecessary complexity that just shouldn't be in the equation, in my opinion, aside from the example I gave. Because aside from that, it's very, very rare on 1263 and, and hopefully on 1264, but definitely on 1263, that there were any other big issues that stood out. There was really just the one time it tried to lead a red light and I had to stop it because it would have ran. Uh, oh, and there was a new stop sign that got put down that it showed no inclination of stopping for. So, yeah, those two things aren't great, uh, but it, those also aren't as common. I mean, that was the first attempted run or failure of a stop sign I've had, man, since uh, deep into 12.541 or 12.36 even. I do this a lot, so I can lose track of when the last time was, but I do know it was a stop sign in Tampa getting off of, I want to say... No, it wasn't a 275 because it was going more southbound. I'm not sure which highway it was, but I, I've got the exit um, or the stop actually in my saved. I think I actually have it highlighted as stop sign fail. Yeah, stop sign fail 12541. Okay, there's your answer. 80 kilometers away, uh, 204 South Newport Avenue in Tampa. So I can go back to that and try it. Because, uh, yeah, it was going down that exit, and there was a stop sign there, and there was just no inclination whatever of slowing down. That's one thing I like to do with the uh, favorites is I'll just go in, and if I take note of an area that's tough or whatever, I'll mark it. There's another area that I look forward to testing that I want to do in the next day or two where I found a crazy unprotected left that was actually in that same video where the passing zone maneuvers. It was uh, 1262's failures or whatever because there's an insane unprotected left at a slant with it bunch of traffic going through Sarasota and yeah Sarasota is kind of a tough place in general so I look forward to doing more testing there but I'm really happy to be getting these updates and it's awesome to see ver or hardware 3 getting some love you know we've been felt like we're we, we've been feeling sorry that we've been left behind and yeah I'm sure it's still not version 13 and we don't have like the ability for it to start and end parking itself and little things like that but the skill set, it's got me excited. You know, I, I'm completing trips now on the dashboard at up in the high 80s, 90s percents. Like that is really good, especially considering where we've been for a while. Uh, after 12.33, it just had gone downhill. Let's see if we have any braking issues with this caution light. Ho ho! No stutters, no problems. I Some caution lights are at different frequencies, it seems, like how fast they blink, and that seems to influence whether or not we kind of stutter or try to slow down but i keep an eye on that i'll report that anytime it does so they have more data to train on i go through cautions like that quite a bit <sighs> where was i my rant oh yeah yeah after 12.33 things just kind of went downhill for a while and culminating in the catastrophes of uh 12.541 and 2 and then we got that redeeming quality when 12.62 hit and I've been enjoying every bit of it. More so enjoying the update cadence too. I, I was, it was hard to get 12.63 for me up to that 50 trip mark. You know, admittedly, I could probably get more trips in a bit faster, but being real with y'all, I, I gotta make money too. And out here in Florida, it's it's a mess when it, when it comes to Uber and Lyft. In California, just to give you some idea, 
there was sort of a proportionality to distance traveled for money earned, which was fine. Let's see how we treat this pedestrian here. We are slowing down a little bit, coming over to the line to give him some space. That was really nice. Just not safe to be walking along the side of the road like that, but FSC did well. But in California, earnings are pretty proportionate to both distance, time, spent, all of it. So I knew that if I had, you know, a, a predicted five dollar, you know, five to eight dollar ride or whatever, that it wouldn't take much of my time, maybe 10 minutes of my time or less. And it was totally great. Here, <laughs> no. Uh, a $5 to $8, $9 ride can be 30 to 45 minutes if you're not careful. I could be spending an hour on a $12 to $15 ride. And what's weird about that is if I just get a bit more picky and I wait, I can also land $25 plus dollar rides for about an hour. You know, it seems to be that like $25 to $28, $29 is usually around that 40 to 50 minute mark travel time wise. Like with customer, it doesn't really include going to pick them up which that is kind of factored in. And then I've seen rides with Uber or Lyft that pay me out anywhere from 45 to like $60 plus for an hour, hour and a half. So it doesn't take a, a genius to realize that there is a major disparity in earnings per time spent with that. So for me, it's more lucrative and gets me to a hardware four car and my new Model Y a lot faster if I am picky and doing what I can to earn. But what I am gonna try to do is, if I hit my monetary daily goal with Uber and Lyft, which is, you know, anything over $100 for the day, I'm, I'm pretty happy, but I would really like to hit like $120 to $150 in that day, because with everything that I have to pay for and, and my goals going forward, that actually allows me to, you know, save up and, you know, get ready for the Model Y. So I gotta, I gotta hit that mark. And, you know, if I can do that 120 to 150 a day, then I can get the weekends off, I get more time to put out content, I get more time with the wife, so it all kind of balance out, you know. Sorry to throw my, my life at you there, but that is the reason I don't have as many quantity of customer robotaxi trips on the dashboard in Florida as I did in California. And, you know, as I get into a financial position where I don't really have to work as hard with this rideshare gig to pay for everything, then it'll get a little bit easier to kind of spread myself out. And it's, it's mostly because of my goal of getting the new Model Y. Like, I'm a regular guy. I know I've said it before. I get comments of people who are like, just get the Cybertruck. Just do it. Yeah, or, or just get this or that. Or are you going to get Cybercat 2? Are you going to get all these? I'm like, guys, I am not made of money by any means. I am as regular as regular gets. I made some good decisions to get into a Model 3 and be able to get my wife uh, her Model Y when things were crazy in 2020. But this is the most expensive thing I have ever attempted to own, you know and I don't have bukus of cash lying around. I have to really grind and save and prioritize and do everything I can to pull it out of my ass to make it happen. So, uh, that being said, Cybertruck will happen when Cybertruck can happen, if it can happen. It really depends on my financial status and how I do with YouTube, honestly. Yeah, so I'm kind of used to how it does this. It's a little sloppy. It kind of gets over like it wants to change lanes there to get in this turning lane. I'm gonna report that back and in fact, we'll Give a voice note. FSD is misreading the dotted white line as a lane to change for a turn and has to correct itself. Okay, I think that was pretty good. But yeah, I mean, it. I am, I'm hoping to be able to scale up the YouTube business side of things and be able to make enough money to be able to get something like that, a Cybertruck that's sitting over there looking all badass. And a bunch of other stuff too. I mean, I, my uh, my wife now is very excited about another vehicle since she cannot stand the way the new Model Y looks. Ironically, even though I don't like it, I'm getting it because it's more practical. Um, I guess a quick recap for anybody who's curious, if you're still watching the video this far in, appreciate you. I am not getting the Performance Model 3 because practicality reasons. You know, I, I had a talk with my wife and I really thought about it. I get a lot of customers that struggle to fit in this car and we're gonna go ahead and, cool. I didn't actually have to give it any throttle. That was nice, a little right turn on red. Uh, I, I have some customers, I, I pick up a lot from uh, medical facilities and such. That's pretty common with Uber and Lyft. And I mean, a lot of folks, they, they struggle to get in this car. It is kind of crazy, but there are some people that are just very large or very stiff or can't move right, their leg is stiff or their neck is stiff, they can't get their head under the headliner, they can't get their foot into the car, and man, that sucks. I always feel bad when that happens, and I'm always thinking, if I was in my wife's Model Y right now, you wouldn't be having this issue. So that 
on top of wanting to be able to pull my boat that I hope to be able to get by the end of the year. We'll see. Um, it's a boat that I can afford. Don't go thinking, oh, you won't get a cyber truck, but you can get a boat. Yeah, I can get a boat that's going to cost me like $200 a month. You know, a pontoon boat. It's not going to be like a freaking yacht, guys. Uh, I, I know most of you have the common sense to realize that I'm not just choosing to get a boat instead of cyber. But for anyone who isn't, a little reality check. All right, so when you factor all that in, the Model Y is just a better bet. I'll be able to easily pull a boat. I'll be able to take care of people. I'll have the most updated vehicle. And I mean, the best selling car inside is gonna be fantastic. I might not like the light bars and all, but the car itself is amazing. And it looks like we're here at the gym. Uh, thing is though, I am waiting for performance. I'm not getting launch edition. I want performance because I do still plan to take my car to the racetrack, to Sebring International, to other tracks, to bring track content. You know, I wanna bring more than just FSD and customer stuff, which I do love doing, but I wanna have a segment for sport driving, racetrack content in the Tesla, um, and even what it's like, you know, hauling a boat, dropping it, launching it, picking it up, all this stuff. And I can do all of that definitely, eventually with a Cyber, but now, or I should say like within this year in a Model Y that I can afford. So I would have liked if we would have gone there. We had time and everyone's going kind of slow. Got my foot over the throttle ready because now we're in an awkward spot. If this light turns yellow, we need to cut in. And we're leading forward, which is nice. I'm not on the throttle yet. It's like we're peaking. And depending on this GMC, we can go. Nope, this van's racing up and now this truck's racing up. So yeah, you can barely see behind this Toyota. There we go. Oh, nice. We did it. We're at the gym. So yeah, we're over here just moving Winter Haven and we're gonna move some weights. I'm trying to figure out where I wanna park and my brain is not working. <laughs> Thanks guys for tuning in as I chat about 1264 and let y'all in on uh, my goals and, and what I'm planning. Uh, I'm gonna get in here and get this workout in and I will catch y'all in the next video. Take care.